Okay, day 46, Eric Braben's still missing. He's supposed to teach today at Yale at 5 o'clock, so we'll see if that happens. The key question is, did the Clinton Foundation, are the donations actually stinger sales? And that may sound outrageous at first, but we know that they took the 20,000 stingers that Gaddafi had here. We know they took the oil, which is fine, but there's a, an inherent risk with these stingers. Um, we know they did the gun running from zero footprint, the Mark Turi trial with the State Department. So we know that from last year. We know the State Department engaged Muslim Brotherhood, not only through all these pictures that were set up as a press event, but also through all the HUMA emails that are going to be coming. We know that the stingers were sold to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and also UAE, and they ended up in the hands of rebels. So if you're willing to sell uh, stingers to terrorists, would you also be willing to sell, sell them to the Kingdom of Morocco, to the King of Morocco? It's not that big of a stretch. I'm engaging terrorists, I'm running guns to take the guns, I'm selling them to three different kingdoms in the Middle East already for terrorists, why not directly? Now the key question is, did Braverman figure that out? So here is the that deal in Western Sahara. We know that there's a pipeline now because they just announced it. We know that the Stingers enforce a no-fly zone along a, a gas pipeline. So was that the reason? We know Algeria has threatened to bomb this because they are contesting that pipeline. So did they sell those Stingers to uh, enforce a no-fly zone against Algeria? And who would know about that? Eric Braverman's husband. So Braverman does an audit called a uh, law firm, Sim Simpson Thatcher, very good law firm in New York. Uh, that what they do is they flag bonuses. The first thing that an auditor will do is in, a, in a real audit, and the Clinton Foundation's never been really audited, they'll flag uh, big bonus payments. And that big bonus payment right there to Sid Blumenthal, $200,000, you can see, sorry about the zoom there, um, would be the first thing that you would see. Plus, when you don't know what somebody's doing in your organization, that also is a flag. And now we don't know about these thousand hidden donations. This is from Clinton Cash. But Eric Braverman could see those thousand donations. So he could easily see a quid pro quo if one was developing arms sale, donation, arms sale, donation. Plus he's flagging all these payouts, these bonus payouts. Uh, what is HIMA doing? What is Philippe doing? What is Cheryl Mills doing? They're at the State Department and they're at the Clinton Foundation at the same time. Why is Doug Band uh, and Justin and uh, flying around with Jeffrey Epstein and flying around with Bill Clinton. Um, why, are, why, why is why the Epstein? He knows all about Epstein's history is the, with the the little St. James Island. So he has a lot of information that we don't have right now to put this situation together. Now we know that Sid Blumenthal. The evidence is he obviously did hire an army and he and he used he went after the Stingers. So. What other information do we have to know that the Stingers went to ISIS? Well, here's uh, three months ago, Mazzetti from the New York Times saying that's exactly what happened. Uh, we have uh, a thousand emails between Petraeus and Hillary's Gmail. We know 30 of them this is the, uh, have answered the request of Benghazi. So we know that this guy here, Chaguri, is a known arms dealer. He supplied Hamas, Hezbollah, Boko Haram. He's been a friend of Bill Clinton for 20 years, so we, we know there's an arms dealer in the picture. We know something went wrong in this arms deal. Either uh, he found out, uh, Stevens found out that they were going to ISIS, or he found out that they were going to other countries, or he found out about poison gas. Something happened. We know something happened bad. Normally you don't kill the people that are working for you. We know Soros has a base in Amman, Jordan. We know Marines were killed there. We know we have CIA agents saying that the the stingers were flown there. So lots of evidence. Here's Chiguri. We know he traded uh, weapons for oil for weapons for the last 20 years with Mark Rich. He stole the Nigerian oil. He sent Hamas, Hezbollah, and Boko Haram. We know he's committed a, a billion dollars to the Clinton Foundation. We know he looted four billion. We know he was convicted of bribery for bribing generals. We know he also is riding on Jeff Epstein's plane. Okay. That was the Nigeria oil play, going all the way back 20 years. We know that this was the plan from Timber Sycamore because 
uh, two different people have reported on it. Cy Hirsch from New York, New York Times, who used to be with the New York Times. And we know that uh, this is Mazzetti again reporting on it, that they wanted to put a pipeline through here. And topple here, coup here. We've got Marines being killed. And the Marines saying that we're training ISIS and they have stingers. We have people making financial bets on pipelines going through here that Neil Brown designed. So lots of evidence of wrongdoing. This is the rat line from Al Qaim to Aleppo. Another need for stingers to enforce a no-fly zone. We know the Russians are bombing. We we have reporters saying, "Hey, they're using stingers. They're shooting." This is Serena Shim, great reporter, sh shooting down airplanes. We know that we sought law fear by to get killed. We know he's saying, "Hey, what about this sarin gas?" We know that the opposition party in Turkey is saying the same thing. We didn't use sarin gas. It came from from uh, 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 Libya. So, was the spring, Arab Spring, really this Arab Spring arms sale? We've got all these emails going back and forth, a thousand of them. We've got all this information going back and forth to Muslim Brotherhood. We've got George Soros putting in a network of radio stations and websites and Facebook sites and so forth, promoting Muslim Brotherhood. We have Mr. Stinger himself involved in this company, setting this up, Zbigniew New Brzezinski who originally did the stingers for Osama bin Laden, way back with the Mujahideen. He's involved. We have the same bank that all these despotic dictators are using, HSBC, and then all of the people I just mentioned, Joustra, Chaguri, and Rich, Epstein, all using the same bank and giving $81 million to the Clinton Foundation. So the key question is, is this basically just, you know, arms bank, Hillary's arms bank? We have Lois Lerner in the last 15 years supposed to be watching over the Clinton Foundation. There's a cover up there. We have this HSBC big one, $2 billion payout and with law enforcement getting a huge chunk. SID's hiring the army. Uh, Chaguri's selling, uh, is trading oil for stingers with Mark Rich. Joustra's selling the stingers in Asia. Joe Wilson's selling the uh, stingers to governments. So basically, he's doing the sort of like legit sales, and he's doing the illegit sales, and then he's got the, you know, bills saving Asia for him. That's why the Petraeus emails are so important, because those operational plans, those eight binders, Zero Footprint was one of them, Timber Sycamore, it tells you where the arms are, how to get the arms, wh where exactly in Benghazi are they. They actually just left the door open in Benghazi. They didn't have to blow the bolts. But here's a key question. Is Hillary using this part of the State Department when these guys were there? To this is the guy who was approving the the, the sales uh, in the Mark Turry case, as well as others. Are they stopping U.S. vendors and saying you can't sell, and then substituting Russian stingers? That's treason. That is treason. So we need to see those emails from the sex case. These are the CENTCOM emails, even before he went to the CIA. We need to see these CIA emails as well. We know that when Sh Stevens called Shapiro and said, hey, we got 400 stingers on the C-130s that are going to ISIS, we know he died a week later. So this relationship, Bill Clinton to Mark Rich, 30 years. He was involved all the way back in 1987 in this triangle. So he's known about this a long time. They see the money. He's seen all these money transfers. They know all about it. And he's let him off three or four times now. Three or four cover-ups now. Going back to the Mark Rich pardon, but also IRS, Fast and Furious, which is just another arms deal. Uh, and now we have all the coups. And now we have the two Huma server cases that he's in charge of. We've got the 675,000, but we also have three quid pro quos. He's been promoted three times. And he's also gotten more agents every time for his counterterrorism division. So this is not, this is massive and in terms of scope, but it, it, it's not made up. These are all, this is all history. I have a short, brief history of the Mark Rich on my channel that you can look at and see the 30-year the history here. Now here's the emails. Here's more obstruction. They don't want, they, remember the nine days they looked at 650,000 emails and said, no, there's nothing there, and now they need five years. So they analyzed them to see if they were classified in nine days, and now they need five years. That's obstruction. 
They also passed another rule, so now they can get anybody's PC. So now they can do a dragnet search of everyone in the United States for any information related to this to cover it up. So these are the 650,000 emails that we need from HUMA. We also need to see the Petraeus emails. We need to see the 14 different Gmails at the State Department. We need to see the 1,000 hidden donations because those are the arms sales. That one, the oil deals. Every time you do an oil deal, you're going to have stingers to protect and create a no-fly corridor. That's why it's important to follow the oil as well. That's it for today. All right. Well, pretty mind-blowing stuff on that George has got. I hope you'll go back and listen, if you haven't already done so, to the rest of his videos because uh, they really are informative and it'll put a lot of pieces of the puzzle together for you. So um, I've got some screenshots here of some of the comments that really uh, touched me. Uh, now, since uh, I was talking about 9-11 and the pre-planning of it, it seems like George knows lots of stuff, and this, if he knows this, is pretty concerning. Here he says, uh, there are Russian intelligence reports that the Stingers might have moved from Albania since the Soros email revealed planning a coup with Kurt Bildt there. Some Russian analysts believe that they have been moved to Juarez, Mexico, just across the border in El Paso, to support the Sinaloa uh, slash La Raza. They believe there will be a La Raza shootdown of a jet at Phoenix or Los Angeles for maximum news impact when Trump is president. Blame him for the Mexican backlash against the wall, etc. Also, the Stingers could create a no-fly zone for Eric Prince of Blackwater, as you know, and uh, Academi, I think is their new name. Uh, Eric Prince's private surveillance of the border that Trump is going to contract to have several sources of information instead of relying on just the Border Patrol information. He doesn't trust the DHS slash Border Patrol now. If true, then the story no longer is about terrorists that are far, far away. And then the other comment that George made, and I'm sorry, I, I tried to block out all these. I mu must have missed the the other people, I just for their own privacy. But uh, there are lots of holes, and the Clinton that it, the holes. <laughs> there are lots of holes the Clintons cannot plug. Uh, Jason Shavitz just passed the FBI Whistleblower Act yesterday with Grassley. Now all of the active agents can talk without immediate reprisal. They can write letters stating this is a cover-up. These letters become public record, National Archives type stuff. Plus, you have all of the CENCOM emails, that's with Petraeus. The generals know the jig is up there as well in CENCOM. You also have the contractor emails. Now remember, we've talked about the generals, or George is talking about the generals involved, not just Clinton Foundation, but there's all these other players, including our military generals. If they did business with the federal government, all of that is there as well. You also have the contractor emails. Oh, sorry, I've repeated that one. Um, and, of course, you have the 14 State Department email accounts that are discoverable as well. So add Hillary's 65,000, actually it's 650,000 emails. Oh, no, that's 60, 65,000 is Hillary, 65,000 emails from HUMA. And you have uh, broken the thing wide open. The FBI guys, guys know if they don't write a protest letter now, they might lose their retirement. And there, uh, they may be a few, th there may be a few things the FBI can't lock away in a vault that are out there, like Philippe's emails from his BlackBerry and his laptop. Also, the NSA and Google uh, also have all of the emails. Even if I hit get hit by a truck now, there is no way they can cover this up any longer. So there you go. That's uh, the first comment. Now, uh, this, the second one here uh, is another one where uh, he, George comes back and says, 
Uh, I don't want to make matters worse, but there are unconfirmed Russian intelligence reports that Hillary is moving the stingers to the Mex to Mexico for fear that Trump would confiscate them. A lot of them have been moved to Al had been moved to Albania, but that cash was discovered. I know this sounds like an unbelievable nightmare scenario, but Hillary, uh, let's see. It's a, Hillary they uses Sinaloa slash ISIS operatives to shoot down a jet or two at LAX or Phoenix. Martial law, spelled wrong, martial law is then declared. This happens if she loses the last day ballot stuff uh, in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, which she has lost pretty much it's pretty much sewn up should be sewn up in the next 48 hours this is so outlandish that i laughed when i first heard it but it has been backed up by a few military sources if i know about it fbi is all over it even if she doesn't go for the lax plan right away she still can disrupt trump's presidency for another run in four years god help us um <laughs> that's kind of a crazy thought. And next, uh, the next comment that I thought was really interesting is he, uh, George says, this won't happen until the, until Trump's inauguration. Now, I don't think it'll be on that day, but maybe, uh, I would think afterwards. Hillary wants to disrupt Trump with crisis after crisis. So it may not just be the, you know, two airplanes at LAX and maybe much, many, many more. And maybe other airports, I guess, too. But he just is mentioning LAX and Phoenix. So the next slide goes on to, she answers, uh, Hillary has had Trump under electronic surveillance since he first went to a Jeffrey Epstein party. Uh, Epstein is their blackmail operative that ensures secrecy of business de dealings. Hillary has some strong cards to play here. She has nothing to lose as long as she dis distances herself from the dis disruption. Trump has to bribe some people and to get every Stinger missile. If that means Navy SEALs operatives in to Mexico, that's what it means. But he has to recover every last Stinger. Well, the ISIS uh, guys have them, so, and they've been using them. I'm not sure how, how many of the 20,000. Down below it says, Ben God, somebody asked, where did they get all of the Russian Stingers? The answer is from Benghazi. So you, now you know why Clinton was, I don't remember, and all of that jazz, hiding everything about Benghazi, because it, it's just like in the chapter one of Methodical Illusion, my first book, um, it was an arms deal gone sideways, as some uh, many of them do. But uh, there were 20,000 Russian SAM 7s and Gadaf from Gaddafi's uh, arsenal, and some of them are U.S. FIM-92 Stinger missiles, and all the others are Russian SAM-7s, and I believe they have a range of about 13 to 15,000 feet for uh, the year that I believe uh, Gaddafi uh, purchased his. So the newer ones go up to about 26,000 feet. Uh, so the next slide goes on to say somebody asked him, where do you store your courage? Because this guy... This guy knows how scary this is because, <laughs> you know, my first book sat on a shelf for two years because uh, I, I had to deal with uh, the backlash. Okay, so I know he's dealing with it too. He says, once you know you're not going to make it out alive, it becomes easier to speak the truth. Huh? I, I deliberately tell a little more of the story each day so I don't get the Seth Rich treatment, Seth Rich was murdered, and he was a DNC employee. Uh, they suspected him of being a leak. I am committed to reporting to the end. Thanks for watching. And then he went on to say, uh, someone asked him, uh, you know, told him to watch his six, watch his back. You really think your days are numbered? And he said, I'm afraid so. I went after McCabe. This is Andrew McCabe, whose wife ran for some position in, uh, I believe it was in Virginia, and received a $675,000 contribution to her campaign. That was all part of some arms deal. that You'll hear George talk about it. Andrew McCabe is in the top one, two, or three position. Not He's not number one, because that's James Comey. He's in the two or three position at, at the FBI, the top level of the FBI.
He says, I went on, I went after McCabe in the 20, in 2010 for the Portland entrapment case. And it has been downhill from there. I still think I have some breath left. So, uh, <laughs> George has been on this. I don't know, uh, what his, his job was or, is or who he is i don't know a thing about him but i just know he knows some good information and the the scary part the highlight part and the reason i made those screenshots is because it seems like he has lots of good information and that there is a plan to use the benghazi stinger missiles on the united states on commercial airplanes now that touches real close to my heart so you can do with this what you'd like if you'd like to make it go viral I think that probably be a really good idea. So I'll try to make it as short as possible for you. And um, I will also stay on top of this and I'll put on my YouTube channel uh, anything that I find out that any, smells anything like this as soon as I get it. Uh, I won't just wait till the weekends and when I do my show. Just happen to uh, have my time to do this. But I'm going to stop what I'm doing if I hear anything else like this, because you guys need to mirror it, you need to promote it, and you need to get it out there. Why? Because it's the only way we can stop hundreds of people being shot down by Stinger missiles from Hillary Clinton's stash, just to disrupt Donald Trump's uh, presidency. And when you look back where I'm going now with my next set of books into who was planning 9-11, who was in the White House, who was where, uh, for the many, many years, nearly a decade prior to 9-11, it wasn't just Bush and Cheney, which a lot of people like to point their finger to, um, but uh, it's somebody else that's very involved in this. So uh, we'll be uh, uh, keeping you updated as much as I can. Thanks.